day and the hour, and almost king's weather for the great occasion. The rain of the previous days has miraculously turned to sunshine as the centuries-old coach turns out of the gates of Buckingham Palace, carrying its two royal occupants to the most tremendous day of their lives. To their coronation they ride, and have you ever seen a more magnificent picture of its kind or one more memorable than this vision through the glass window as the sweep of the coach brings the king and the queen full face to the camera's eye? It is the traditional progress along the historic route to the Abbey, lined by tens of thousands of eager subjects. The King wears his cap of state, the Queen, clad in her royal robes, bows gracious acknowledgement of the fervent tumult of the multitude. Preceding the royal coach have gone the Prime Ministers of the Empire, cheered by spectators along the Mall. And presently, at Westminster Abbey, the hearts of solicitor's subjects have been stirred by a brief glimpse of the little princesses alighting at the royal entrance. Here, the Earl Marshal, the Duke of Norfolk, awaits the arrival in turn of each royal person. And whatever greetings it was his privilege to offer, is echoed a millionfold in welcoming Queen Mary, whose glass coach has been everywhere the object of affectionate demonstration. The Queen Mother passes within, the first crowned queen to attend her son's coronation. So, the scene is set for the advent of the state coach itself, turning from Admiralty Arch through Trafalgar Square into Whitehall, which alone of London's thoroughfares can have seen greater crowds than today's. Along the road of national homage, where each year the king renews for his country its abiding ideals of peace and memory of those who died in the great war. Past the senator, in solemn majesty moves the coach, and the charming and gracious pair whom the world delights to honor this day draw near for their coronation. coach stops and the king alights. The queen follows him into the specially built annex to the abbey and the tidings that King George and Queen Elizabeth have come to their crowning are signalled by the royal standard flying overhead. And the king is crowned within the abbey where it is the special privilege of Movietone to record the historic and religious scene the 900-year-old ritual is observed with traditional fidelity. The Dean of Westminster brings from the altar the crown of St. Edward, the crown of England, to the Archbishop of Canterbury, who, picking it up with scrupulous regard, carries it to the King, sitting robed in cloth of gold on St. Edward's chair. Who form, he crowns King George VI, and the camera catches those significant moments when the King rests, scepters in hand, crown on his head. The king has been crowned and the peers of his realm have done their coronets.
in the sight of his family, his peers and his commons, the king has been crowned. Imagine the emotions of Queen Mary as she leaves the Abbey with her granddaughters, having watched the coronation of her son. Let us give a thought to for the feelings of our King and Queen, consecrated in two hours of ancient symbolism to their great and lifelong task. And as the Queen gathers her beautiful dress to step into the state coach, the clouds gather also as if to reinforce the stern note of the burdens laid upon their heads with the crowns which now adorn them. So, this great old abbey has staged another coronation, and from the sanctuary beneath its tall towers, the procession begins the long drive back to Buckingham Palace. On this drive, the procession is led by a great array of troops, men from every country of the empire. You will of course recognize the Duchess of Gloucester with the Duchess of Kent beside her. Only Nelson on his column has elbow room in Trafalgar Square. There can't be any doubt that it's the biggest crowd that London has ever known. Queen Maud of Norway and the Princess Royal ride with Lord Lassels. And when the roof reaches Piccadilly Circus, what a spectacle meets the gaze. If you recall that many of these people have waited here for more than 12 hours for their minutes of exaltation, it should kill the old idea that we're an unemotional race. In this return drive, Queen Mary has the little princesses with her in the glass coach, and could a greater stimulant to public enthusiasm have been designed? No wonder that rain fails to still the voice of Melty. Crowds upon crowds upon crowds. You will read that millions were present, but who can determine with any accuracy how many spectators are here today? And all have one supreme focus for their enthusiasm. State coach brings its happy occupants back home to Buckingham Palace, and those who saw the start of the triumphal progress five hours before witness its completion. They witness more than that. For them is that delightful picture of the crowned king and queen on the balcony with their attendants and family around them. With their family. For there are the little princesses on the right coming up to share the acclamations. But the king is looking round for someone, and maybe the crowd is calling for her too. Queen Mary is drawn into the family group, and with this study you will wish me to conclude our coronation picture, saying as fervently as I do, God save them all, God bless them all.